really, really proud of the uh, efforts tonight, the work put together by these guys, and uh, just any time you come into a tournament, you know, you, or just for us, we just, we want to demonstrate we're championship relevant, and any time you're going five deuce games in the fifth, you're making that statement. Uh, we play the game to win, and yeah, it's, it's, it's great to be on this stage, but uh, this feels like unfinished business. And so I think there's some learning moments here for our guys. And, uh, you know, obviously I'll go back and start mapping next year's journey as soon as I get home, start thinking about what it's going to take to get back on this stage with a team that's going to change a little bit. But uh, to have been on this stage three times in the last six years, to continue to be championship relevant with UC Irvine and all the changing landscape of Division One athletics is pretty special. So just grateful to the administration for the support, grateful for the NCAA for adding the opening rounds, grateful for all the people that have done work behind the scenes to get this thing from four teams to seven teams to wherever it goes next. Even number would be great. Thank you, Coach. We'll now take questions. Coach, uh, can you tell us why you uh, started uh, Tucker tonight as opposed to uh, Joel? Yeah, we talk a lot about you know, the imagery with our team, you know, who we are, what we're about. You know, our, our mission as a program is cultivate champions, win championships. And you got to act like champions before you can be champions. And you know, a lot of these guys are going to go on and be champions if, you know, we've got some academic champions, guys that are going to be championship-level parents and contributors in society. And, and we think about, you know, what, what being a champion looks like. And one of the things we talk about is just this imagery of the, the phalanx, this, you know, this group of, of guys that's fighting together, you know, protecting each other with the shields on their left and defending each other with spears on their right. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for us to put our best foot forward. And we put Tucker out there because he fills a role for us that, you know, I think we were – we were inconsistent with and uh, so we put him out there and we knew Joel was going to be right there to back him up in the other areas of the game where Joel's strong and maybe Tucker's you know not um, so the opportunity to really fight as a team tonight and to demonstrate that through action through you know utilizing our subs was just an opportunity I think we couldn't pass up um, Coach can you talk a bit about how you felt the team came out fighting in the first set today because um, as opposed to The game against Hawaii it looked like you guys were really just excited to be there I didn't see much nerves from you guys you guys just looked like you guys were just ready to compete out there um, Is that just partial to um, getting that at large bid and kind of having a new lease on life in this season or? Well anytime you have time, you know it was a, it was a real quick turnaround and we saw Hawaii And so we had some time to get to know Ohio State a little bit, which is great um, but I think, you know, similar, when we, we went out and played Ohio State last year at Ohio State, and, uh, you know, I, I remember some of our guys uh, the night before, you know, we were watching them compete against San Diego, and, and you watch a guy like Scherz and Serve, and, and guys go, you know, it looks fast on video, and then you, you see it in real life, and you go, gosh, that, that's a little <laughs> faster. And then you get in the game, and it's whizzing by someone's head, and they just go, yeah, that's even faster than, uh, than when we were watching from the sidelines. And so I think it takes a little time to calibrate to something like that. Uh, I don't know that you can simulate the way that Ohio State attacks the ball from the service line. But uh, what I did think was that we got better as the match went on, uh, certainly in the passing facet of the game. So I think that's as much of anything. We got off our heels and started playing offensively from the uh, passing lineup. You guys are doing great. <laughs> Scott, getting this uh, chance to play in the NCAA tournament, how do you think this will motivate you for the rest of your career and hopefully push this team forward for next year? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure this team needed much more motivation to get here. Uh, I think we're all very – thank you. Uh, I think our team is all very motivated. We're a very driven team. I think you know, no one around the country ever questions our work ethic. It's a hardworking team of guys that really just want to compete. So. To get here, to get this experience, you know, it, it gives you a taste of what we're fighting for next year. So that's awesome. But uh, yeah, I never, never doubt our team's drive to get here. Yeah, Dante, uh, I'm disappointed that you cut your hair, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I, I, 
there's obviously some controversy that with your guys' inclusion as the uh, at-large uh, um, over Hawaii. Um, how were you guys able to, um, or how, how were you guys um, um, able to uh, deal with um, the uh, distraction and the noise uh, and uh, focus on Ohio State? Uh, we don't we don't listen to noise from outside. Uh, we really, I mean, we keep it within ourselves. We're really grateful to the committee for the opportunity we got, and we scheduled hard and put together a good resume throughout the year. And Hawaii's a great team. We're a great team. We were just honestly super grateful for the opportunity, and I hope that the uh, tournament keeps growing, like Coach is saying, and eventually we get to a situation where we have you know eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four teams. So first we got to get sixty-four programs, then we'll work towards that. <laughs> I just have a quick question for the players and for Coach. Um, you mentioned it, Dante, that you guys have had a very tip, difficult schedule this season, and it's probably the truth that the Big West was the most competitive division this year in college volleyball. Um, you will be returning everyone that was out there on the court tonight, with the exception of Tucker and Grant and a few other players. How do you, how do you feel as far as going forward next season, your strengths? Well, first of all, we're really grateful for Tucker Pakula, Reed Dominguez, Ben Sebastian, Logan Zodovich. Those are our four seniors. And, uh, you know, obviously those guys had limited roles on the court in the spotlight throughout the year. Uh, but they were absolutely cultural captains for us behind the scenes. And, and obviously you saw Tucker and Reed shine tonight uh, and do some really good things for us. And, uh, you know, I, I think the thing for me is uh, – you know we're system strong and we're 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 systematic and we're process oriented and so you know this team is a very different look than the team we had in the NCAA's in 2015 which is a very different look from the team we had in the NCAA's in 2013 which is different from 2012 which is different from 2009 and 2007 and even 2006 i mean as we continue to you know bring in UC Irvine guys whatever that means um, we continue to build our system around the personnel that we have. And so I'm not sure I even remember what your question is, but uh, I just think as we graduate, you know, we, we're grateful for what they bring, but um, it'll be a completely different look next year, even though maybe it, it wouldn't seem that way right now. I think uh, the way those guys contributed and obviously helped us at the end, uh, you know, to, to not have those personalities, those skill sets in our squad anymore, um, it'll change everything about how we train and how we approach the season. And that, that mapping starts now. Coach, there's a lot of um, w places where you could uh, second guess yourself. Uh, I guess for me, the uh, place where I would uh, second guess uh, is uh, you guys were out of substitutions at 12-11 uh, set five. Um, if you had to do it over again, would you have done that, or would you have done what you did with the uh, running out of uh, subs at 12-11? Uh, You're going to run out of substitutions at some point. Uh, so, you know, do you use them early, do you use them late? You only get six either way. Uh, choice was to use them early. You know, we wanted to be on the attack. We wanted to be aggressive. It wasn't a time to play. You don't play defensive volleyball against Ohio State. Um, you got to go out there and, and lead. And... Uh, so we made the most aggressive moves we could early, put ourselves in a position where it was going to be tight. We knew just based on the way that we play the game, we're going to be a deuce game team down the stretch, and it's going to often come down to two points. I think we're still, you know, in terms of teams that have lost this year, I mean, there's, there's, we still haven't been swept. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm looking around, and I'm just thinking we're in every, every single match we play, we're in it. Um, but, yeah, yeah, use them when I can use them. Feel free to second guess. Um, Coach, you actually touched upon what I was going to talk about, and that's how this entire year this team hasn't been swept at all. What does that say about these guys? Because I think you only had one returning starter this year, and you know most of these guys are all new starters. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, just, I mean, we, we kind of knew that's we wanted to be a team that just found a way to battle, you know, and our mantra is kind of, you know, we're going to get one. And if we can get one, we can get two. And if we can get two, we can get three. And if we get three before they do, we're, we're going to win some matches. Uh, so, you know, just I, I think for me, it, it, it says a lot about just buy-in to the, the system and the philosophy of what we're trying to do. You know, we, we were very aware of our limitations when we look at the field out there. You know, we, 
we're just not built the same way some of these teams are. So, uh, you know, how do we leverage those strengths? And, uh, you know, that buy into that mentality was a big part of it. For the boys, you guys talk about mapping this journey, you know, early on, presumably one of those goals is just getting here, right? Talk about why this experience as a whole has been valuable to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, we touched upon it a little earlier, but it's getting here, feeling the pressure, you know, feeling all of this. This is something that you don't get in a regular season game. It's all different. So as much experience as exposure as we can get to this is, I mean, awesome. It's, it's a great experience. Obviously, the game didn't go how we wanted it to, but now we know what it feels like to be in a do set against a good team, and hopefully next time we'll get them. Any further questions? Oh, did you want to? Anything else? I would just say we're very grateful for the opportunity too. But I mean, playing volleyball in Poly Pavilion, it's a huge stadium. There's seven teams here. There's media that want to cover it. The game is obviously growing. And to represent a school and to get the chance for us to come out to California and play volleyball and then compete for a national championship is pretty cool. So we're very grateful.